melting is definitely melting is there because the glacier melting is uh, one of the important things that's uh, continuously supply water especially for india but if if it is accelerated like uh, the recently uh, in the mid of uh, 20th century it's uh, getting acceleration means enhance the melting rate so uh, this rate is actually creating trouble for the people abhi uh, global warming ke wajah se aur glacier melt badhne se uske bahut sare problems in future aayenge jaise glow one of them is glow glacier lake out uh, breast flood ki uske wajah se yadi hamare paas koi early warning system nahi hai to wo bahut hi uh, lethal ho sakta hai bahut hi dangerous ho sakta hai In the last few years the Hindu Kush Himalayan region or the HKH region has been facing more and more flood related situations this region which includes the world's highest mountains covers 4 million square kilometers across 8 countries and is vital for the lives and livelihoods of 240 million people temperature and precipitation regime changes because these are the two important variables which um influence the uh, health of a glacier and it is uh, not only the glacier it is the entire cryosphere system which responds to these changes and uh, as per these changes happens um the water availability downstream also varies and that is what is more important for the society to look on while some floods in the area have been caused by natural causes the most catastrophic ones may be the result of glacial lake outburst floods or glof the last recorded glof event in india was in sikkim when at least 14 persons were killed in north sikkim in october 2023 research also indicates that hindu kush himalayan region is warming faster than the global average this directly threatens its diverse ecosystems and rich biodiversity we would like to assure that yet you are not nice santara and- but before we discuss glofs and its impact on the himalayas let's first understand how they are formed and what are the factors influencing them so when glaciers change or at the time you get a, a lake being formed so if you have an equal amount of input to the glacier usually in the form of snow an equal amount of output as the snow and the ice melts we see it's in steady state and the glacier is going to stay the same size and have the same amount of runoff and everyone's happy and um, what happens is a lot of the time either a glacier gets less snow or especially as we see happening at the moment it melts more but if the climate warms up a lot or quite quickly then it's going to it's going to melt even faster and if you have a big ridge with ice and frozen rock at the center it's going to be unstable and start moving around so this is one of the ways that you can get um that the lake could then burst out so within just a matter of minutes or hours or at the most days you can get this huge flood from the glacier and when i say huge you know we we could be talking about millions of cubic meters of water here so that kind of volume when it gets downstream can cause a huge amount of damage to people and buildings living downstream in india 16 lakes have been declared vulnerable on the vulnerability index hence the constant monitoring of glof is imperative the cryosphere initiative a program started by the international center for integrated mountain development or icimod a regional intergovernmental body studies the snow ice and permafrost in the hkh region regularly yeah we have different criteria like we first to look at the area so based on the satellite Im- images we download the images from like if we have to compare from 1990 to 2010 years so we download the satellite landsat satellite images and then map the area on in the gis So from that yes we can uh, easily estimate the area. Okay so you can see the changes in the glacier as well as in the lake. Look it's glacier is sourcing right and you can see the lake formation here also. So from that we calculate uh, the area then the expansion rate we can easily estimate then we can see that if that uh, lake has any other cascading lake close by so that if the lake uh, can if the lake breeze then that can that lake can uh also impact the other lake which is in the downstream so then we can see the dam what is the condition of the dam is that the materials in on the dam is the uh, loose moraine 
or if the slope of the dam is very steep, if there is any erosion happening on the dam, or if the, if uh, there is uh, any uh, high steep uh, mountains close to that lake, so that there is a high possibility of the ice avalanche or the rockfall. So we everything will look around what is happening around that lake. So considering all these parameters, we can say that that lake is uh, yeah, hazardous. So this is Inja Lake, which is considered under potentially dangerous. So if I go back, you can see that in 2000, uh, this lake looks like this. And as uh, time goes by in every year, the this lake has increased a lot. So in the current state, the size of the lake is this. So you can compare that how much this lake has increased and you can also see the supra small, small glacial lake so maybe in the future also this lake can combine to form a bigger lake like this now the question arises what can be the possible implications of gloves and what can be done to reduce the risks as the glacier first starts getting smaller you have more and more water so you have an increase in in discharge and how much river flow you're having and this could be a good thing if you need more water. It could be a bad thing if it's you know, leading to floods. And this is different from the gloss, from the glassy lake outburst floods. This is just floods because you may just be getting more water in the peak melting season. Eventually, the glacier continues to get smaller and smaller. And there comes a point where you're now getting less and less water. So if you're really dependent on that water for irrigation, and now you're getting less, then you have a problem. You also might have a lot of different people along the river valley that are using the water. So if the people upstream are using the same amount of water as they've always used, then the people downstream are really going to be hit by this. So this is you know, one more reason to study glaciers because we want to know how are the changes in water going to affect us? And it's, you know, how quickly are they going to happen? And we also have to consider other parts of Christchurch, so snow as well. If generally you're getting more snow or less snow, and that's contributing to the river flow, especially in the springtime, you need to understand that. And you could be getting the snow melting more quickly, melting earlier than it used to, which could be bad for your crops if they need the water at a later time. It could be melting faster than before, so before the, perhaps the, the melting season was a bit more slow, a bit more pace, and now it's suddenly happening in a very short period of time. So these are all things that are affecting people because of changes in the cryosphere. So uh, what are the different management techniques that can be used to basically mm -hmm. reduce the risk? One thing that you can do um, is just to lower the lake level. If you lower the lake level, then the volume of water is smaller. So it means if there is a flood, it's going to be a smaller volume of flood. It also means it's less likely to be a flood because there's not so much pressure against whatever is damming it. So if you can lower the lake level somehow, perhaps you can you know, find some way to dig through the moraine if it's done by moraine or use pipes to lower it. The next thing to do is to put in some kind of warning system. So you can measure the, the lake level, and if the lake level starts to drop, then something's happening. You can also measure the how much water there is flowing downstream from the lake. So if the discharge in the river suddenly goes up, again, that's a warning thing, that some, a warning sign something's gonna happen. So putting in some kind of warning system that gives, say, a siren for people downstream is another thing you can do. We need to see where the changes are happening fastest we don't need to see where the glacial lakes are changing fastest. And we also need to consider what's happening downstream. You could have a lake that looks like it could flood soon. Um, it could be a huge volume of water, but there's, if there's nobody downstream, it's not that important. But you could have a smaller lake and there could be quite a lot of people and communities downstream. They could also be developing more and more. And this was the example we saw in Sikkim where over the past 10 years had been a lot of development, especially related to the hydropower. So that we have to look not just at the lake itself, but what's happening downstream and seeing where there's development happening, where there's a risk of glacial flood and possibly there's never been one before, but we think we could, there could be one and people might be unaware of the risk. Our story ends in the small town of Pokhara in Nepal, where the International Mountain Museum is located. This museum showcases the indigenous inhabitants and the snow-covered peaks of the Hindu Kush Himalayan mountain regions.
it is an effort to make people aware about the challenges we face today and the disasters that are waiting to happen as these mountains dry up further the sad part is that we have reached a phase in our warming world where such museums are becoming more and more important